outnumbered over time. Oh, gee, baby. Uh, I love it when we have things that people continue to talk about even after the segment. And so we have a live chat going oh, during boy. the TV version of us. <clears throat> and the segment that you anchored uh, about what we could potentially find out, according to uh, Congressman mm -hmm. Forbes, mm -hmm. Uh, from what really happened with our sailors when they were in captivity of Iran just, you know, a couple of months ago is getting a lot of buzz. Um, people are very concerned. Southside 6, 631 says, why were our soldiers there in the first place? Uh, you know, people want to know exactly what happened. But then the question is, how much do we need to communicate? Well, they're so fired up because the images that came out of that are so indicative of the way the United States in many places has been neutered and humiliated based yep. on the foreign policy of this president. And so the, the images of our men and women surrendering and then apologizing on a propaganda tape, female soldiers made to cover their heads, uh, and then the way that we then bend over backwards to apologize to them and hand propaganda to the Iranian regime, it infuriates people. And we know we don't know the full story. I was talking to Leah Gabriel about this, who served in the Navy and was a part Our of a lot of elite yeah. units. Yeah, And she said there's just no way to know what the actual, at this point, I mean, that maybe that's what the document is revealing. There's so many more wrinkles to this potential. Yeah, now here's a whole stream of people going back and forth. Turner Mike 05 says, U.S. sailors return unharmed. Fox is looking for a negative angle. Uh, Artemis 1 says, uh, who forces you there? So, you know, people want to know what we were doing there. Fed Up in Lakewood says, you don't care that Iran broke maritime rules. Mary Speck says, or Marie Speck says, I for one do want the truth of what happened. Yeah, those are waters that we have patrolled for a long time. People forget that the reason we have free trade around the globe today is the United States Navy. It maintains free passage in those international mm. waters. It has been us for decades. Uh, that's why we're there. Uh, Kirsten, this is from James E. Johnston. He says, the only only way we can hear what you want to hear is for the President Obama to declassify it. Your thoughts? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I do, I'm always for transparency. I'm always for more information. I would love to have more details about it. I just also know that on both sides of the aisle, people often come out and claim that there's all these amazing things we're going to find out. And then down the road, you think back on it and you're like, gosh, there was never really anything there. So I just like to wait to hear what it is before I start impugning right. people. You were onto it, too. I, I didn't note this in the segment, but Randy, yeah. it's such a great point because Randy Forbes is in a contested primary right now in, a, mm -hmm. in his race against a Navy SEAL. Right. Uh, and it is huh. it's become a very contentious race. So yeah. I'm not oh. I'm not I'm not impugning his motives here necessarily. Right. But, hey, it's gotten a lot of attention and mm -hmm. it's on a military issue. And he's on the Armed Services Committee. He's running against a Navy SEAL. I don't want to be cynical right. about yeah. it, but you never know. Well, we, oh, all right. we did this deal and you still have chance death to America, death to America repeatedly in that country. And I, I'm sure I'm not the only person on this couch bothered by that. But I, again, that's that was the relation that that was what we knew going into the Iran deal. And it continues despite this opening of relations. And they get a nuke out of it. So to speak. There we go. Uh, for Pete, you and I both know the rules of engagement are hardline orders which will not be violated. Do you know the standing rule of engagement during the Iranian capture of the boat sailors in the Persian That's Gulf? a massive question. Th th it is not known exactly what their rules of engagement right. He, he, he or she, whoever wrote that, is exactly right. Because these, 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 so these sailors would have <laughs> obeyed the orders given to them based on certain s criteria and use rules of engagement when to engage, when not to engage. Most likely, it's not as if you had a captain of that ship who was suddenly a coward and decided I will give up. I'm, I would be very surprised if that was the case and more so it would be uh, we had a set of orders that restricted our ability to do certain things and therefore we laid down our weapons or we submitted. That's what needs to be known is because rules of engagement can be standing. They can also change and be very situationally dependent based on the immediate order given about a particular mission. Then they can come from the top or they can come from that, that platoon leader or the, or the captain oh, of the ship. So. Okay. Uh, also Iran but loose related. So Kira 1108 JMS says, please clarify something for me. I constantly hear people, most recently Harris, actually this isn't exactly what I said, but I'll say in a minute, <laughs> stating that we gave Iran $150 million. And in actuality, they had access to $150 billion because of the deal. So the second part of your question is right. Did we give that money or did we give them access to the money frozen? Can you talk about the dollars? 
The do- I'm sorry, I'm reading about how smart Kirsten is. <laughs> okay. um, oh. Emily Trex weighs in with a big compliment for you, K- Kirsten. K- Kirsten, you are so smart. There's a lot of people on here who are happy to oh. see you back. So I'm so sorry, oh. Harris, you totally busted me. Uh, no, 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 let's go back to that. I, I, should, to. I should note that there's 7,000 people on the live chat right now. Yes. So they're oh. really? coming in wow. so fast and furious. They're that, zooming, uh, right? I was, I was totally there's taken 7, aback by the reaction people? of the show. Yeah, I it, hope one of them is the guy who said, I wish there was a Botox shot to get rid of the trailer trash that is Dagan McDowell. So, what? Oh, what? 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 No, 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 I, read, I right. read them and I'm like, you know what? I will take trash from a trailer park any day over the porta john that you live in. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. I've not heard talking smack on the live I do not talk right. smack. I, I, you know what? If you send me a nasty tweet, I'll retweet it. Oh, <laughs> don't doubt that. And she Raina does world. do that. Are you serious? <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll retweet it and then rain a world of hurt down on your little social media empire you have with your five followers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Senator Bullworth. I don't think he's a real senator, but, you know, you never know. Uh, Hillary's speech. Does anyone really care what she said? What the public really wants to know is, one, who attended those speeches, two, where was the speech given, three, the speech's duration, and four, what are the transportation arrangements and who paid? (laughs) So uh, the who attended those sorts of things, my big question is, how come we haven't heard from any of these people? Did they all sign uh, confidentiality agreements? If you work at at a financial firm and you attended one of these speeches... You can't speak? If you you start talking about it and name names, you would get in trouble with your employer. She also may have negotiated in the contract that's off the record. Yeah, there Uh, were definitely... definitely, Why doesn't she say that? Because that sounds sketchy. It sounds even shadier than it already is. <laughs> yeah, but, um, <laughs> but we did, the Wall Street Journal did some terrific reporting oh. on the speeches that she gave to Go- Goldman Sachs, and they, they said that the the people they talked to, not for, uh, not for attribution, said that they were gushy, that she was complimenting the firm about its role in the economy and how much good it had done. Well, and, and why do we like think that. it would be anything other than I don't think like, wanting. So right, exactly. No. That's what it is. Mean, but I mean, you so talk good. to <clears throat> these Wall Street bigwigs every day in Mornings with Maria. And we had Robert Wolf, the former chairman of UBS on this morning. He's an advisor to President Obama and he's a huge Hillary Clinton supporter. And you, you ask these guys, like, what is it? What? Why? Why is there such support for Hillary Clinton coming from Wall Street? And I have I never really get a clear, concise answer from any of them. But they do say whether whether this is exactly what they believe or not, that they do believe she is going to be the best person for the economy and for Wall Street and for money. I mean, what? Go ahead. she's no. part of the complex. She, 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 they, they understand her because they can invest in her mm-hmm. as they've invested in other politicians in the past I, and get policies that are advantageous to them. It is truly cronyism. I'm not saying all the things that ba- banks do wonderful things for our economy. They do amazing things. We need them. But there is a level of cronyism that exists in Washington, a nexus between big business and big government that people are fed up with. Wall Street Week had, had Kyle Bass, a, a famed right. investor who, who accurately bet against the housing market right before its collapse and he is an adamant supporter of Hillary Clinton says she he believes that she understands the economy better than any other candidate well Trump's uh, chief fundraiser Steve Mnookin worked at Goldman Sachs so it goes both ways and he actually set up a fund with George Soros mm-hmm. so his politics doesn't you know is is not yeah, related to they, what he does did, for a living did they feel this <clears> way before it was clear that Trump was going to be the nominee, or is this an anti-Trump thing? Because it's, they've always, she historically has gotten a boatload of money from the financial industry. Wait, did who feel what way, Kirsten? These, the bankers, just because with, I could see Trump versus Hillary, they would go with Hillary because they're going to have some influence over Hillary. Because by giving, of the speeches? Correct. Correct. Giving donations. Correct. Okay. Trump isn't really going to... Access. He's, well, there's not going to have... Trump's not going to go, oh, who gave me money and come on in. He's going to... Th- th- you know, that's not... That's what's ha- going to happen with they Hillary. They gave her... They have given yeah. her boatloads of money when she ran for Senate in 08. Mm-hmm. That, that, that historically, the, a lot of money came from these firms. So you know? what do we know from your reporting for Fox Business, uh, Dagan, about her relationship with some of these firms because I, I I find it really hard to believe in this day and age that Goldman Sachs has not had one employee who's left who could tell us what's going on at one of those speeches right I mean I understand what you're yeah. saying about retribution retaliation if they're still on the job but is Goldman Sachs retention of employees a hundred percent 
I don't think so. No, they, they've talked generic. I've, there's been a lot, some reporting on generically what she said. And it was just, you know, it's kind of your typical a love political fest? speech. Yeah, yeah she was pra very praiseworthy of the firm and of the people at the firm. Joseph Stanelli, Dagan, love you, girl. You are so smart. Six O's, <laughs> keep it up. There's another I love you to Dagan there, too. I know. That's, oh. uh, who's Thanks, that? Mama. Minnesota. <laughs> All right. Mama is very adept at social media. <laughs> we love you, too, Pete. Oh. And Kirsten. Good to have you, everybody. We'll see you back here tomorrow.